It's just extraordinary in so many different ways. Liverpool were 2 0 up in this game. Huh? Nunez would open the score with a brilliant flick, then a mistake from Courtois would see Salah. They make it 2 0, and then it was just all about Real Madrid. Brilliant goal from Vinicius Jr. Allison then lost his head, cleared it off Vinicius Jr. to make it 2 2. Defining moment, you have to say, just after the break, Militao with a good header, but Liverpool's defence falling asleep as Real Madrid made it 3 2. Then it's a brace from Benzema, deflected goal for the fourth, then a brilliant finish led from Modric and Vinicius Jr. We we'll see Real Madrid win by five goals to two. So just leave that graphic up. It's, it's just, uh, uh, there's so much to talk about, but just from someone who doesn't have a horse in this race, I'm, I'm just, I'll start, we'll hear from Stevie in a moment. It was so much fun, wasn't it? It was just brilliant. Well, it, I had more fun every time I turned to you and went, because we were watching it here. <laughs> yes, yeah. We knew he was at home, and every time <laughs> Sam Hartman went, he's shouting at the telly again. <laughs> yeah, we just, he's screaming at the TV. It's going to get worse. I, look, just quickly, Liverpool started the game like their old self and then quickly morphed in to the new Liverpool of what we've come to expect, certainly this season. Had a great opportunity to, to strangle this Real Madrid side that haven't been playing well and just, you know, made too many mistakes. You know, the Vinicius goal didn't get close enough. The keeper yep. has just got to clear it. And so, yeah, Real Madrid were clinical. Absolutely clinical in the second half. Uh, they were exceptional uh, after the break. Stephen. Mm. <clears throat> I've been trying really hard to not be... I, sitting watching it, it felt like somebody was ripping your guts out. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Wow. And at the end, I don't think I have ever in my life heard an opposition group of fans all laying at Anfield. Ever. I don't, I don't remember it. I, I'd love to know if this is the first time ever. And it kind of tells you the story of... Tells you the story of how good Real Madrid were. Yeah. But it tells you the story of how bad Liverpool were as well. And I think the goals sum up both sides. I think the first goal and the last goal sums up Real Madrid. You know, the first goal kind of comes from nothing. Liverpool seemingly in control. And it's just a bit of... It's just the star that Vinny is. You know, yes, you can argue he should have been closed down better, but he's got a little window to put the ball in and he finds it and all of a sudden they're back in the game. The second, third and fourth are just... I could be here for 20 minutes talking about the mistakes. Right. But then the fifth goal shows you the brilliance of Real Madrid. I mean, from one end of the field to the other, effortless, great passes, the perfect passes, the right pass... Picking the right player Which to play it to. That was the Luka Modric run into Vinicius Jr. Laid it off the Again, Benzema. it comes about from a throw in. Yeah, but, but from when they get it, though, oh, yeah, I get it's that. just smooth. And then to top it all off, the finish. Mm -hmm. You know, Benzema dummying the goalie, dummying Gomez again. There's still two people on the line and he's still 12 yards out and he just picks a gap between them. I mean, so... The, all the goals kind of sum up both sides, the good and the bad. Uh, Carlo Ancelotti mentioned it after the game. At 2-0 down, Real Madrid don't lose their heads. Mm. Right, and that's true for Real Madrid, but it's not true for most teams, even in this competition. And I must say that at 2 nothing down, I wasn't exactly sitting back and saying, nah, that's all right, Real Madrid got this. They're coming back, they're going to score five goals. It didn't look like it, because Liverpool... We saw from them that they were pressing high, that they were forcing Real Madrid into mistakes. Real Madrid looked uncomfortable with the high press. Camavinga is slipping all over the place. They're losing the ball in bad areas, and you're thinking, my goodness, Real Madrid looked bad. And how quickly did it turn? Yeah. And I think it's to the credit of Real Madrid, but we also have to point out the level of confidence or lack thereof for Liverpool. When it started turning, when it started going in the direction of Real Madrid, it's like somebody pulled the plug on Liverpool. And then Real Madrid took over. And the real quality of elite-level sort of player. And we're talking about Modric and how he gets on the ball and he knows exactly what he wants to do in the midfield. The work rate of Fede Valverde. How relentless Vinicius Jr. is down the left-hand side. The qualities of Karim Benzema getting in spaces where he can keep the possession of the ball. There is so much to like about Real Madrid in this performance. And I know that we have seen Real Madrid perform at a high level in Champions League before, 
but this is as, as good as I remember Real Madrid playing in Champions League over the last few seasons. And they have won Champions League. But this performance in the context of being down 2 nothing and the manner in which they came back and how dominant they were in the second half, this was outstanding from Real Madrid. It really was uh, something. So, I mean, I, mean how they, I, I don't. It's hard to gauge how Liverpool can go from being so dominant mm -hmm. in the middle of the park mm -hmm. early on. Fabinho, yep. Bicetich getting so much space, Gakpo dropping in there, and then it's almost like the goal just completely destroyed them. It's like they knew what was coming because it's happened to them so many times this season. They've just crumbled defensively. They've been poor. Then all the spaces opened up, and against Real Madrid. Come on, you know, Camavinga had a poor start to the game, then got better, and then once Modric started to control it, but you just can't keep making those mistakes, and it's, you know, we've seen Alisson do this before, yeah, we had a mistake from Courtois, but guess what, his teammates bailed him out, yeah. Alisson's didn't, and we've seen him do this this season, taking chances. I mean, even, even the two goals that the goalkeepers get stick for, yeah. It's a lot easier to understand the Courtois one because the ball he gets back, his first touch is here with his chest. So the only thing that's going to happen is the ball's in the air. He's waiting for it to come down. He's got Mo Salah running straight at him. It, it, panic's probably not the, the right word, but he's, his legs are six foot long. He can't figure his legs out. <laughs> he ends up hitting his knee and then the ball's in the back of the net. Yeah. And, and as much as it's a howler, you can kind of understand it. Right. The Allison one was the first time that I shouted at the TV. Okay, first and only time throughout the whole game. Absolutely. Oh, what? <laughs> because oh. It's, run the tape back on that. Because it's it's one. It's the worst way to lose a goal. It's a bad decision. Right. This is not. This is not. He's unlucky. This is a terrible football decision from somebody who at one time was the best goal in the world. You know, when you're playing the game. You're working things out as it's happening. And the run from Vinnie Jr. is from here across here. And a football brain tells you, you go the other way. Right. He doesn't do that. He tries to make that pass, which tells you either he's panicked or you know what? His confidence is, is, is short as well. What I thought was interesting, OK, you got your team together at 2-2 two -two at halftime. Right, we're still in this game. Just keep it tight at the back, keep it sensible. And within, what, the opening two or three minutes of that second half, it was too easy, wasn't well, it? Well, that's when individual mistakes start. I mean, the, in, the individual mistake from, from, from Alisson, is, yep. in, in my opinion, is the game changer. Right. You know, the first goal, you can kind of get over it because it's a piece of... It's just a piece of ability. There's five and six defenders around Vinny. But the second goal, I think, absolutely pulls the stuffing out of Liverpool. And the third one is down to... A player who's not good enough to produce at this level, and Joe Gomez. The free kick he gives away is absolutely schoolboy stuff. And yes, you can argue, Craig's talking about the, the, the free kick, the way they were lined up, where they can't see the ball, they're not side on. Yes, you can look at that. But it always starts somewhere. And Joe Gomez was in the middle of everything that went wrong for Liverpool pretty much, along with a few others. So. When your group as a unit is lacking in confidence and then you add to the fact that some players ability-wise can't perform to the right level at this level, things happen. I thought it was clear to see a difference in level of quality, just overall quality at this point in their careers in the midfield. And while the first 20 minutes, and Craig just mentioned it, the first 20 minutes, you, you're looking at Liverpool and you, you're seeing a different level of energy. You're different, a, a different type of urgency from Liverpool. Whenever Real Madrid actually got a hold of the ball and actually slowed the game down to the pace that they wanted to play it, and they started knocking it, it's almost like Fabinho can't quite get there anymore. Jordan Henderson can't get there anymore. Bryce think is not getting close. They didn't even get close to challenge Real Madrid. And that's the part that I thought was really concerning from Liverpool's perspective, is that it's not lack of work. It's now they can't get there. Right. Uh, right. And so we can point out the mistakes, and the mistakes were very clear. But the level of quality right now, currently, that we're seeing between what Real Madrid can produce through the midfield and what Liverpool were trying to produce, certainly in the second half, is just we're talking about elite level and a team that 
is where they are in the Premier League. And that's how they played in the second half. That's what we saw in the middle of the park. And when you're talking about Modric and Valverde and Camavinga and whenever Benzema drops in, you're not going to win. You're not going to stop it. And they didn't stop it. And to the point that Stevie was making earlier on, to hear the electric Knights of Anfield that we have heard in the past in the club era, to hear that stadium quiet and all you're listening to is Real Madrid fans just yelling after every pass that Real Madrid completes, that is something, even by the standards that Liverpool have set this year, that is something that I was certainly not expecting. We can talk about... We keep hearing about throw-in coaches and set-piece coaches and whatever that entails. To go back to that Gomez mistake, the body position of at least five senior players... Yep, it's for the third goal, yeah. Third goal, Militao, is not even under 12 schoolboy level. To have a ball over here and everyone's facing that direction, every one of them, not one of them, Militao's here, I can see the ball. Like dominoes, got, weren't they? And I've got my hands here like that. I'm blocking every player that's near me, I'm blocking and I'm watching the ball. My head's on swivel. <laughs> They're facing the ball. That's... You know, you taught that as a kid. But these are players who, who've been part of this Liverpool success over the years. Why? Why do we see these errors? Why do we say all... Oh, no, I mean, it's the head's just, gone. You they, can't... The closed. body position is just terrible. And, and you give Luka Modric an inch, yeah. and he sees it, and Militao sees it. It's absolutely uh, brilliant. That's taken nothing away from, from Real Madrid. I tell you what, once again, I know we've talked about it before, I think one of the best players in Europe, and I mean this in all sincerity, to have in your squad has to be Nacho. I mean, arguably, he did a better job yeah. when he came on than Alaba. Yeah, I think, I think Alaba must have been carrying an injury because he, he, right. he got done he about got done. four times yeah. early but, on before he came off. But my point is, you, that guy, and we've talked about him before when he's had to come on or he plays and anywhere, you put him in the middle of the park. Yeah. Well, he's a footballer, isn't he? Yeah. Actually, it's unbelievable. Actually, you can say that about Real Madrid. That's, that's really the difference. Liverpool, at their best... We, we can see now that the way that Klopp wants to play, we see it now that it heavily relies on the pace of the game and the closing down and the running. Whereas Real Madrid, it's about football. It's about moving the ball. It's about running. It's about picking the right pass. It's about making the right decisions. It's not about has to be 100 mile an hour. Right. Because when Liverpool are it's doing... It's about playing football. It's about playing football. So what happens now, Stevie? Is this, is this kind of a defining moment? Is this the end of an era for, for Liverpool? Ah, this team needs... This, this team, and, and we kind of... We disagreed the other last week about this, Craig and I. In the middle of the park needs an overhaul. Absolutely, 100%. You know, we saw, we saw in flashes, and we spoke about it coming into this game, that, that Nunez and Salah... At the weekend, looked as though they got a bit of a spark back. And after 15, 20 minutes... <laughs> it's we the saw same it. story again. We it? saw it, right? So, you know, you've got... He's still got plenty to work with. He's still got Diaz to come back. He's still got Jota. So, going forward, then that looks fine to me. I, I, the forward line, I, I'm not worried about. Really, Stevie? Like Salah? The second half? Like they, 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 I, I mean, Dan, he's not, he's not at his best, but let's be honest. He's still got money in the bank. He still has some money in the bank. In the, in the realms of things, the middle of the park and the back line is pretty bad, pretty shocking, pretty shambolic. You know, if you're playing Gomez and Alexander Arnold, and, and again, he's got a decision to make with Alexander Arnold. Mm -hmm. Because again, you see this guy whipping balls in tonight, and you're like, what's a ball? But he has zero idea of how to defend. And if you put him next to somebody else who's got more of an idea but isn't good enough, then ha half of your defence is done. When, when Klopp is going to be looking over his shoulder at what Chelsea are spending, City spend, Manchester United potential, do you think part of him is thinking, maybe I've done everything I can at this club? And would you it blame him? It depends if, if, if he gets... Look, there's no question that they have to replace players, right? You need 300 million to start. Right. Well, you, he's not going to get it. He well, uh, uh, and, and I can't answer that question, Dan. You know. Would you resent him if he left? 
Yes. Yeah. In what sense? In well, the, I can't believe he's, he's leaving us as believe, the, 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 you know, the Titanic would, sinking and he's I jumping would, ship. Yeah, I would much rather that he went, OK, maybe you're not going to give me three or four hundred million, but at least give me a couple of players and let me try... Let me try and work with what I've... Not completely with what I've got. Let me try and hopefully... Maybe some of these younger guys will take a step forward. Let me bring a couple of guys in and let me work with them. And if he does that and it doesn't work, then I'd be fine with that. But if he turned around and, and, and went now, I would think less of him. I still think he's been fantastic. Right. He's, he's obviously a great coach, great manager. But I wouldn't like to see him leaving right now because, as you said, when the ship's going down, you, should, you know, I think... I if think they get walloped at the Bernabeu and the, and the season peters out for them, yeah. in terms of the Premier League, they're kind of hanging on to some outside chance of a top four. I mean, I'm stretching it there. Uh, but if they get walloped over there and it continues to go down and he's not getting vibes from ownership or the potential sale of the club or the sale of the, a majority shareholding, he might think about it in the summer. He might. Especially if, for example, Mr Ancelotti mm -hmm. has enough at Real Madrid. You see opportunities like that to be able to go there and take it and, and understand what Steve's saying is that you want him to stay and fight. But how much is that drive when you're not getting the support from the boardroom? Well, and never mind the support from the club itself in terms of money. But you know now the environment in Liverpool and around the media that surrounds the club my guess is that when he wakes up tomorrow morning, the news are going to be more towards we should be thinking about live post Jurgen Klopp, that maybe it's time to move on from Jurgen Klopp. And if indeed the tendency is that this club doesn't make it into the top four, and they, as uh, Craig just mentioned, they get walloped, yeah. which I guess is not a good thing. No, um, walloped. <laughs> yeah. walloped. Yeah. No, you don't want to be walloped. <laughs> yes. I suppose it's not a good thing. If indeed that happens, then that's only going to pick up momentum. So if you're Jurgen Klopp and you're sitting back and you're saying, hold on a sec, the job that I know I've been able to do in this club, the, the profile of the club that, I ha that, that we have now, that wasn't quite there before, before I got here, Right? It's a team that not only was win is win has won Champions League, but was com competing year in and year out to win the league and win Champions League. We weren't there before when I got here. At some point, you got to sit back and go, really? Right. This, is, this is the treatment that I deserve? And that's why if he were to walk away under those circumstances, my feeling wouldn't be one of resentment. If I were a Liverpool fan and I were part of this club, I would try to hang on to Jurgen Klopp for as long as I possibly can, right. not push him out. I think this is a unique manager who right now is in a unique position because the team and the transition from the team that he had to the team that he wants, we're right in the middle of that transition. He's not handling it very well. The players are not handling it very well. The board is not handling it very well. Somebody has to be able to make a smart decision and say, here, we have a really good manager, a world-class manager. Let's not push him out. Let's make sure that we do enough to put our arms around him and make sure that he stays with the if, club. If anybody thinks about pushing him out, they are off their rocker. Right. I mean, I, I, I feel awkward talking about him getting the sack, to be honest, because... Well, he won't. Because he shouldn't. Well, he won't. He shouldn't. No, but I'm not... I'm the, only not people I'm, that, the only people that will be talking about getting sacked... The press. Are, yeah. are, 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 just are, are radio media. phone and yes. in yeah, UK exactly. and yeah. social media. Uh, let's get more reactions, shall we, from Anfield. Gemma Soler was there for us. It, what an incredible roller coaster of emotions, Gemma, from the whistling of the UEFA theme to your never walk alone before kickoff to then, as Stevie said, you've got the Real Madrid fans at the end chanting Ole, which is something we've hardly ever heard at Anfield before. Hello, uh, Dan. Yeah, it was such a, a roller coaster, uh, an amazing game, a thrilling match. Uh, it, it had absolutely everything, uh, uh, such a vertical, offensive spectacle in, in the first half. Uh, and, and then after the break, um, I, I think Liverpool showed that they are uh, a mentally weak team. I don't know what happened in that locker room, but the body language of the Jurgen Klopp men in the second half, it looked like they were doubtful. They never believed they could 
uh, come back again and score another goal and pass through Real Madrid. I, I can understand that Real Madrid is some kind of uh, nemesis of this uh, red squad, but uh, um, it, it was a, an absolutely a, a roller coaster for for the for the Liverpool fans that they started so strong with a you'll never walk alone with uh, uh, chanting so much, uh, bringing that two nil, uh, and then they, they saw like they the Real Madrid scored five goals once again. Uh, Real Madrid passing through over over them. Uh, there's one thing I, I really like it at the end. You were mentioning the ole ole chanting from the uh, 1,400 uh, Real Madrid fans, but at minute 85, uh, and I'm saying this because you were talking about what's going to be happening, of course, with Jurgen Klopp and, and stuff. But but the Anfield start singing again. You'll never walk alone. They they just saw five goals in a row of Real Madrid. They were twice uh, five two. Uh, they were losing uh, and they managed to to try to help the team because a goal could mean that maybe they have a chance in the Santiago Bernabeu. This never happened. Uh, and I think uh, now I understand why this team with such a talented squad, they are eight in the Premier League and, and they have they are a disaster in the defensive side. They were unable to do the high pressure that we used to know from, from Liverpool and, and at the end this really bad result. And for me, the key is what Thibaut Courtois just explained us in, in, in the mix area. He said that they were patient and they are a very strong mental team. They just came from winning La Liga and the Champions League. So they can be patient because they already won everything last season and they can be patient and wait for the chances they did. And they succeed in another magical night for Real Madrid in the Champions League. Yeah, no, just add it, add it to the list. Uh, Craig, how impressive is it? to have that mental capability, that confidence in yourself as a side, that even at 2-0 down, there isn't a kind of panic? Because they've got players that, that are game changers, mm. just pure game changers. And the other thing, the other part of watching Real Madrid and, and, and Barcelona and all the great sides, but is standards. If one of those players gives the ball away easy possession, oh my God. Right. They're, 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 they're told about it. Yes. So they are. When they hit the straps and they got themselves back in the game, they puff the chest out, they're so good in possession, they've got so many game changers, they kept the ball so well through that second half, it just frustrated Liverpool. And it's standards. They've set themselves such high standards. You see Modric going around the field, yeah. if, you know, keeping the ball, little one-twos, Camavinga growing in, in, in conference, Valverde's work rate. I mean, if, they could, just, them, if they, they could just be that exciting every week in La Liga. I know, that's the thing. <laughs> like, why, why don't we see this week in... Is it just Liverpool because they're going to lackadaisical? It's not the same motivation? Uh, it's lack of interest. Right. They're not excited to play against Osasuna. Right? No offence to Osasuna, but Real Madrid could not care less. They do not wake up in the morning motivated to play a mid-table team in La Liga. It just doesn't do it for Real Madrid. This moment... Right. This night, this is what this club lives for. And, and, and you can see it in the players. The, we have not seen this level of play from Real Madrid in La Liga. And we watch this team play yep. every weekend. And every weekend, we come into halftime of, of games thinking, well, I don't know, they're in trouble. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where they're going to get the productivity from. What's going to happen if Benzema is not healthy? What's going to happen? This guy's not playing well. That guy's not playing well. They've been inconsistent. And then they show up tonight, down to nothing. And Gemma just mentioned the word patience there and, and that Thibaut Courtois, which by the way, it's amazing that Thibaut Courtois is the one saying that it's, we're good because we're patient. <laughs> Nobody would have been patient with that <laughs> sort of mistake. Regardless, it's easy to be patient when you have done this in the past, when you have been able to prove to yourself and to everybody else that you can come back. And so I go back to the goal by Vinny Jr., because at that moment, Real Madrid were not in control. At that moment, Real Madrid were underwhelming. They seem uncomfortable. They couldn't quite keep possession of the ball. He scores that goal, and it just changed everything. The whole feeling for Real Madrid, it's almost like, okay, all right, we're here. We're interested. This is a game for us, and this is when we take over. You saw that reaction from Real Madrid. You saw totally the opposite from Liverpool. You, you, talk about, you always talk about a culture. Right. And a culture's built... From the, from the first day of training, 
you know, it's not a case of, well, they go 2 0 down and then all the players start thinking in their head, well, we'll be all right. We don't need to worry because we've done it before. That's not how it happens. Right. You don't think. Yep. You just do it. It's the best horses, Steve. It's, it's, <laughs> the culture has seeped into you. Right. And it's not until the game's finished when people go, oh, I can't believe how you never panicked. And you're like, well, actually, we didn't panic. Right. You know, it's not... It's it didn't, not we didn't even contemplate. It's not a conscious thing. It's a culture thing. Right. Most teams don't react that way. No. Most teams... No, well, they're, they're, there, are very, there are very few teams that, that can create the culture mm. like that. You need great players... Good characters, a calm and manager, standards, a calm and, manager, and a great right. ma yeah, yeah. manager. No, big a, time. a calm manager who's big sort time. of been there and, and yeah. trusts his players. Listen, they got battered last year in Paris. Yep. They were on the canvas. They got up at nine. Right, yep. they got up at nine. Where, where did they get up against City then? Right, take a step <laughs> forward. <laughs> canvas on the floor. Canvas again on the floor. Pick themselves up. Got a bit of a going over in the final, yeah. Even against a Liverpool side that were flying at the time, but won the game. It's in these players and this club's DNA. Right. It, it's no, it's it's no coincidence it keeps happening. Uh, Gemma, one of the great moments, and, and we we talked about this a lot last season when they're on this run, is Luka Modric at the, at the end celebrating with everyone like it's his first big win. Like his his <laughs> love for this game at 37 must be so infectious for everybody else around him in the team. Yeah, because uh, I mean, he, he he mentioned he he's in the in the team of uh, his life. He loves Real Madrid. He's like he was born in Chamartin, just next to to the Santiago Bernabeu. He feels it so much, and he's an animal competitive. He loves winning. He w loves doing it over and over again. And he loves, for example, remembering that last last season. They, everyone was criticizing him, him and, and Cruz and, and so much Real Madrid. No one gave a, a Real Madrid like one of the main candidates last season. And they did this over and over again and he enjoys it so much. So yesterday he was uh, the star of the press conference and he said that like, um, I mean, la last season you were saying we were uh, dead. We had no more chance in the Champions League. You did the same this season after the... Uh, the, the World Cup, uh, and yeah, he recognized maybe uh, he rushed too much in coming back to the team because he's 37. I think sometimes he forgets that he's uh, 37 uh, and he wanted to come back just after the World Cup uh, and the physicality of himself and the team was not good enough. But I think after winning the club's World Cup, uh, they have that winning mentality back again and they, ha they have not that pressure of having to win because himself and all this team have already won everything and and they have done it so many times so they know they can do it and that's what it showed here in my back in Anfield uh, just in front of the cup that they were two nil down but they just were patient they did their game they did no more mistakes and they managed to get five goals in Anfield actually uh, a three nil was the the, the worst uh, uh, defeat of uh, Liverpool in the European Champions League it was 2014 against Real Madrid one is again three nil uh, three goals different two five against uh, Real Madrid it's like they have some kind of trauma and when they see Real Madrid their legs start to to shake and they don't mentally believe they can beat Real Madrid one more thing about Luka Modric conversation, rumors going around and his contract renewal. And I don't think it's a coincidence that things have been said by Carlo Ancelotti to the, to the effect of we're going to have to rest some of the guys, we're going to have to rotate because we have, we're in a moment in transition and yeah. players like Chuameni are going to get an opportunity and Camavinga are going to get an opportunity and Florentino Perez, is he going to give a new deal to Luka Modric or not? Yeah, see, Florentino, I'll answer the question for you. You need to give this guy a new contract. It, it's it, it, like that, that fifth goal is just so brilliant. Not only the run, but then just the perfect ball into Vinicius Jr. And actually, what you were just talking about, a guy who's 37, you think he, he acts like a kid? Yeah. Did you see them all dancing after they scored yes. the goal? Yeah. I mean, all of them, they were like a bunch of schoolboys yeah. that, had, that had just won the cup as 10 year olds. I mean, I don't know about you, son, but at 37, I couldn't run a boat like that. <laughs> 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 yes, son. <laughs>
couldn't do that in 27. <laughs> I couldn't do that in 27. <laughs> and then, of course, you've got the Vinicius Jr., you know, who there's so much excitement around this player, and we, we obviously see flashes, sometimes he frustrates. But it was interesting, the press conference afterwards, Jurgen Klopp was asked, is he one of the best players in the world? Jurgen Klopp went, yes. His translator went, see. Sí. <laughs> 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 just, just, and when you see him, like that first goal, uh, out of nothing, really. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what puts you on that upper echelon of, of world-class well, He's just players. taking his game to the level that Real Madrid were hoping for, but, but were getting frustrated. But he was young, you know, and you think back as well and about the disharmony in the dressing room with, I think it was him and Benzema, mm. right? Yeah. So that, I mean, when, when, when one of the world's best players, Karim Benzema, is heard saying, don't pass him the ball, that has to drain your confidence. Right. So to pick himself off the floor, dust all that down and get back to business. And then one of the things we talked about at the start of the season, could, would he be able to go again? And clearly we're getting the answer. Is it 17 goals or something like that? Mm. So it's not just the wing play, the assess, the ball possession. It's the end product as well. And yeah, he's having a, a, a second brilliant season. And, and, and he's always talking, like Benzema clearly is like, it, it, it's mentoring him on the pitch. You can see it all the time, talking to Vinny. Yeah, and how Vinny affects the game, it's obvious to see in a 1v1 situation. It's obvious to see when he scores a goal or when he assists a goal. But the fact that he keeps coming time and time and time again, and certainly going to keep coming when you think about the fact that you're going against Trent Alexander-Arnold, he's saying, oh, goodness, <laughs> I love me some of this, because you know there's going to be space. He affects how Liverpool had to defend because now Fabinho has to get out there because now Joe Gomez has to get out there, right? So it's not only the fact that Alexander Arnold is not defending Vinicius properly, it's how it affects everything else defensively for Liverpool and offensively for Real Madrid because Fabinho has to get out there, Joe Gomez has to get out there, it creates spaces in the middle where now that relationship with Karim Benzema where he drops underneath and now we're combining and now we're having all this possession in the attacking half. Vinicius Jr. right now, when he focuses and concentrates on playing the game and displaying his talent, the special talent that he is, he is world class. He is at an elite level. When he concentrates and focuses on fighting with everybody else, he comes back to the crowd. But when he's all about playing, there's no stopping him. You know, we, we're talking about Vinny, we're talking, talking about Modric, we're talking about Benzema. Yes, yeah. The other day, and last week, we were talking about Messi and Mbappe. Oh, yeah. And Neymar. Yep. You talk about the difference between a, three players in Real Madrid and PSG. Three in PSG who it's... Other than Messi, probably. It's me, 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 me. This three are actually helping each other. Right. Because all the things that Vinny's doing is pulling players away is leaving Benzema, who appreciates it, and who's leaving Modric, who appreciates it even more. So you've got three superstars, basically, and that's why Real Madrid are so good and why they can do what they did at Anfield, as opposed to three at PSG, who have a completely different outlook on the game. Uh, last word to this on you, to you, Gemma. How many have they won? 14? Is it going to be 15 for Real Madrid this season? I mean, you never know with uh, Real Madrid, uh, but I think last season nobody would point them as a, a not even a candidate at the, the mm. very beginning and not, and not in the in the last 16 and as a, as one of the main favorites. But you never know with this team. I mean, they have this uh, a strong mentality, especially when they play the Champions League. When they listen to the Champions League music, it's like they they turn into. Uh, something uh, they they put the competitive level in in another stage. So you can never say Real Madrid are not a candidate uh, with uh, this mistake last season. You can never forget that they already won 14. Uh, we will see. I mean, they are in in the last uh, eight. We can say that, uh, and they have that mentality. And I think that if they have to, uh, Ancelotti will pick uh, the Champions League ahead of La Liga. They already mm. done that. Uh, for example, the last weekend in El Sadar when he uh, uh, rotates the team to, to, to be ready for that uh, game, for this game and, and they did good. So, why not uh, done with this team and the Champions League? Anything can happen. I've seen that movie at least 14 times. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emma. Hey, still the second leg, Stevie. Yep. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>